Lord, we pray that you draw us closer to yourself. As we visualize you on the cross, passing through all these pains because of us, may our lives never remain the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the living God. The second word of Jesus on the cross. Verily I say unto thee today, shall thou be with me in paradise. What led to this statement of Jesus? There were two criminals crucified with Christ. They agreed that they deserved what they were passing through. One of them, he had the last opportunity. Both of them, they had the last opportunity in life. I hear that when they want to execute criminals, sometimes they will ask them to say their last word or their last prayer. These two persons decided to use their last opportunity to do something. One of them, he was accustomed to evil. He was used to evil, used to doing evil. And he decided to use his last chance in life to make a record, but a very bad one. The other one, who also was as bad as that one, decided to make a record too. He created a record, but a good record. Jesus just begged God that, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what? They don't know. It was a time of Jesus to also show the forgiveness that he just begged others. You know, sometimes when we find ourselves in problems, we don't like applying the advice. We have pieces of advice we have given to people to ourselves. We are always very perfect. In most cases, when we want to talk to other people to forgive. But when it comes to our turn, we find it difficult to forgive others. Jesus just begged God, Father, forgive. He was also using his last opportunity on earth. Jesus used that opportunity to create a record that even in that pain, he was passing through, he could still forgive. Instead of being drawn away and being uh, smeared in, in anger, Jesus was still, he, he was able to gather himself together and dish out forgiveness instead of answering the man who just insulted him. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto thee, Today you shall be with me in where? In paradise. What are we using our time for? Are we conscious of our time? Some years back, I met a man. He was over 80 years old. It took me time to summon courage to meet him. So I met him. I said, Baba, this is what God revealed to me. God told me that though you have been in church, every day you attend church, he does not know you. The Baba looked at me and laughed. He was laughing at me. And he said, how can God say he does not know me? The God I pray to when I don't have money, I say, God, give me money. The next minute, he will use somebody to bless me. Are you telling me that God does not know me? About a year or two years later, the man died. This is how people live. Even on deathbeds, on the deathbed, people could still call their children and tell them, you see that family? You must make sure you deal with them. You see this person? You must not marry from this family. The father, the great-great-grandfather, this was so thing to my great-great-grandfather. And instead of passing out good things, even on the deathbed, people still use their last chance to do evil. I stood of a young man, a story of a young man who was to die. 
And then they said, the only son of the woman. She, he said, call my mother, as I was told. Let me whisper something into her ear. And when the mother came around, right, he said, please shift closer. I don't want anybody to hear. And then he did what? He beat the ear of this woman and spat it on the ground. He said, you never corrected me. When I was going into the world, he said, it's my only son, oh. it's my only son. Oh. You were pampering me like pampa. Today, I am on the death gallop. It's a lesson to some people, but it's a very bad lesson. 